So we just saw differences between how eukaryotes and prokaryotes regulate their genes. Eukaryotes have additional problems to solve because their messenger RNA which is made initially is not the messenger RNA which will be used for transcription. The first RNA which is made is called the pre-messenger RNA which has been freshly transcribed. It has to go through processing before it can be used by the ribosomes for first of all exported from the nucleus and then recognized by the ribosomes and ultimately the message in the messenger RNA could be translated into proteins, functional proteins. Three types of processing have to occur on messenger RNA. Number one, introns have to be removed. The genes of eukaryotes, they have axons and introns. The regions of DNA which are, which are deleted from the messenger RNA and the regions of DNA which are converted into messenger RNA but they will ultimately be removed from messenger RNA. Those are introns. Once I show you the picture, it will be more uh, straightforward. The transcribed pre-messenger RNA has also to get a G cap, a modified GTP at the 5 prime end of the messenger RNA. This is basically done to protect the RNA. RNA is a very labile molecule as compared to DNA. RNA has a very short life because it degrades very, very easily. The third change that happens in RNA is after the last codon is added, there's a polytail of about 100 to 300 nucleotides which is attached to the 3' prime end. And this, the function of this tail is to facilitate export of messenger RNA to the cytoplasm and this also protects messenger RNA from degradation. So let's first look at what are introns and how they are removed. As I was saying that the regions in DNA which are not used for coding amino acids in a protein. We have two introns that are basically DNA sequences which will be transcribed into messenger RNA, into pre-messenger RNA but they will be removed from that messenger RNA once it matures. So the initial transcript, the pre-messenger RNA has both axons and introns. Axons are the regions of DNA. When they are converted into, transcribed into RNA, they are kept. Introns are removed. And introns, after they have been removed, the axons are joined together. And now we have a mature messenger RNA. This is basically splicing and patching up different regions of messenger RNA. We can see the mechanism but before we do that let me show you proof how people came to know that this is what happens in fact. So if we have a DNA which is coding for a specific gene it has one intron and two axons. So we remove this DNA from the cell and we also remove the messenger RNA which is produced the mature messenger RNA from the cytoplasm we take that out and we hybridize it. When we hybridize it, it will RNA, DNA, they have to have complementarity to hybridize with each other. So when we look at the, the electron micrograph of this hybridization, this is the structure we see. So we would not see this structure unless there were regions which were deleted from the messenger RNA. So this is the, the, the schematic form. Here you see the complementarity of messenger RNA is with these two regions. When these two regions, this messenger RNA has to combine or hybridize with these two regions, this region will, these regions, the intron regions will bulge out and it, the structure would sort of look like this. If that was not the case, if there were the messenger RNA, the mature messenger RNA did not have its introns removed, it will form this bubble structure. So when scientists look at this hybridized messenger RNA DNA structure under the electron micrograph, they saw, they didn't see the bubble, they saw this structure which was indicative of deletion or removal of introns from the mature messenger RNA. So let's look at the mechanism, how this happens. Here in the cell we have particles, special protein RNA complexes called SNRPs, small 
nuclear ribonucleoprotein particles that are uh, abbreviated as SNR NPS or pronounced NERPs. There are two types of SNRPs. There, one of the SNRPs binds the five prime end of of the intron. The other SNRP binds the three prime end of the intron. Introns have consensus sequences. Consensus sequence means conserved sequences. All introns have same sequence at the five prime end and same sequence, but a different sequence at the three prime end. The all introns three prime end will have the same sequence. All introns at the five prime end will have a different sequence from the one which is on the three prime end. So when the binding takes place, these two SNRP molecules, they come together. When that happens, there's a intron bulges out and other protein particles, other machinery, cellular machinery assembles here. Ultimately, it results in formation of what we call as spliceosome. This structure, this entity will cut RNA, the pre-messenger RNA at two sites at the junctions of messenger RNA, at the junctions of intron exon. It will splice the messenger RNA at the junctions and it will also then ligate forming the mature messenger RNA, which will be translated into a protein. The introns are degraded and recycled. The mechanism for binding of these nerves to specific regions of introns is, as I mentioned, because they have RNA component in it. And this binding of SNRP at the particular location is also based on the principles of complementarity of the nucleotides, DNA and RNA. Here we have RNA hybridizing with RNA present in the SNRP. So as I mentioned earlier that RNA, pre-messenger RNA goes through these three steps, removal of introns, addition of G cap, addition of poly A tail at the three prime end. Now this messenger RNA is ready for export and being translated into a protein. Additionally, I would like to mention how X chromosomes are inactivated. We know that females have two X chromosomes. One X chromosome comes from the parent father. The other X chromosome comes from the mother. One of these X chromosomes is inactivated. This process is at random. RNA, the inactive chromosome starts making, chromosome that is going to become inactive, starts making a special RNA called Xist, which stands for X inactivation specific transcript. This RNA is not transcribed, it does not even leave the nucleus. It starts to bind the X chromosome from which it was transcribed and this leads to spreading of inactivation along the X chromosome. The other active X chromosome makes interference RNA or RNAi which is exactly complementary to the Xist RNA. It is appropriately called T6 RNA. And this RNA basically prevents production of T6 prevents the active X chromosome from becoming inactive. So here we can see it on the screen. There is the X chromosome. It is making the exist. The gene is transcribing RNA uh, RNA and it is coating the uh, the chromo it is coating the X chromosome and making it um, target for methylation. When methyl group is added to the cytosines of the DNA it results in making the DNA unavailable for transcription. So we have seen different strategies. Cells can, how cells can regulate their transcription by shutting down the whole chromosome or by selectively expressing certain genes using uh, different strategies.